every object has embedded information associated with it. And when you double click a beam um, or any other steel shape, you'll see some boxes here, um, entries that have information already uh, embedded, preset. This information can be edited and saved with that member. But you can also edit that information without having to double click it or by editing multiple members at once without having to go to each one of them. So um, in this line here, we, we can go through each one of those things. Actually, it's these three icons here. The one you're never really going to need is local edit. So the reason you're not going to need this is because local edit, when you select it, just brings up the component edit window. This is the exact same thing as double clicking the beam. So there's not really any purpose for that uh, that command or that icon. However, the other two, global edit and global edit all, definitely have their uses. Global edit, when you select it, um, allows you to select a member or members, and when you select those members, brings up a small dialog box. This dialog box has the same boxes, only they're empty, but the same five boxes you see in the standard component edit window here. Same thing, short annotation, long annotation, description, part number, and material. These are the same, same fields, only when you do the, uh, the global edit, they're empty. And they're empty because these allow you to do overrides within this box. Thing is, the only time you really ever need to do this is for the description. And I explained this earlier, how you can tag steel members um, in the description line with... Um, whatever you need to say you're making an MPS. So let's say we've got this steel member and let's say we got a you know standard T support. We'll put a uh, a column right here. Right? And then we'll put a you know nice little wide flange here. Not even close to realistic because it's overly sized, but what? It's all right here. That's probably why. All right. So we've got our member, and I'll bring this up here. So say we want to copy this over like we would, you know, in a in, the, in a, a run of tray or pipe, and so we're copying these things down. What you can do is tag them individually. So we select one, and we select both these members, and we can say, okay, we're going to call this support MPS001, and then we're going to call this MPS002, and we're going to call this MPS003. Okay. Now, doing that, when I double-click the members here, you can see in the description line, it used to say wide flange, now it says MPS001. Same thing for the column, MPS001. Because I've changed the description line for both of these members at the same time without having to go through each one of them and change that. This is great for maybe tagging an entire structure, a column line, a pipe rack bent, um, but mostly uh, I'm using it for uh, miscellaneous supports is when you're going to see it used the most. But if you need to give any description to steel, you can do it there. And if you have the tooltips enabled, which I don't yet, it will show up in your tooltip as whatever the number is. And I, I, I'll, I will go over um, how to enable the tooltips. Okay, so then we that, that's, that's global edit. Global edit all is similar, okay? Except that when we use global edit, what we get access to is just those five boxes. When we use global edit all, what we get access to is an additional window that shows us uh, kind of a little fly out here that there's two wide flanges included in this, and one of them is a 615, one of them is an 824. I can select each one of them, and by doing so, I can override the properties. I get the full component edit window. And I can say, you know what? Make both of these 831. 831. And there it is. Now, the reason it opened up two windows is because I had two different sizes. So let's go and undo this. So let's say I've got an 818 and an 824, and I want to modify these both. The both W8s. 
but they're still separate sizes. So I'm still going to get two dialog boxes. Basically, look at it in the sense that every checkbox is going to bring up a separate dialog box. And I know that sounds redundant. Like, why would you do it that way? It seems longer to do it that way than just to double click and edit it manually. Well, the reason for that is because let's say that I've got a bunch of these supports. And let's say each one of them needs to match. All the columns need to be the same. All the beams need to be the same. So in the sense of one support, yeah, it doesn't make much sense. Just adjust it individually. But when I'm selecting all of these members together, now I've got 10, support, 10 beams total, five columns, five beams. I can say, you know what? This beam and column need to change. Engineer wanted the column to be an 824. And you can see that this is the column because it's got the center marker. Center insertion is center line in the center. So I'm going to say 824. And the beam needs to be an 831. Now, each one of these has been modified to show that this is 824, 824, 824. This is uh, 831, 831. And I was able to do that because it gave me two different dialog boxes, one for the column and one for the beam. But it doesn't recognize that they're columns and beams. What it recognizes is all of the members that are the same size. And it's not just beams. Let's say I go and put uh, a plate in. Let's say that... that all of these, let's do an undo, right? And these were previously W6 columns. So let's say me, the CAD jockey over here, is making an assumption that we're okay with, uh, with a W6 column. So I'm going to put my plate, my bolts, my bolt spacing, and go ahead and, uh, and insert these plates. I got three still. Okay. So I'm going to copy these down again. Let's one more co copy. All right. What happens is when you have additional information, additional uh, members, like including plates, you're going to get a box for that stuff too. You're going to get an entry. So now we've got multiple items here. We've got the W8s and we've got the four plates. So I want to change everything because my engineer wants to change that whole support. So we say, okay, we change our 615 to that 824. We change our 824 to that 831. And we get the, uh, the dialog box for all of the plates to be edited at the same time. Now that we're going with the bigger column, I need a bigger plate. Maybe he wants to go to one inch uh, uh, plate thickness. And then we have to change this to 14 and 14. And then now we're maybe uh, one and one eighth, I guess, um, and then 11 and 11 inches. Everything's been modified at the same time. Now, truth be told, you could also have just, you know, mod modified one, erased the other ones, and then recopied. But if you've got a lot of supports and a lot of changes to be made, this is handy for that. Same thing if you've got a bunch of beams on a pipe rack. Say you've got 20 bents on a pipe rack, and engineer wants to change sizes for the top two levels, you can do that. Um, in fact, I'll do that real quick. Let's say this is not, this is not a, um, uh, let's do this. We'll change this to an 818 and we'll put it over to here. Okay. Let's say that, uh, we'll copy this over. Maybe it's a small pipe rack, so we'll do it 10 feet long. All right. So let's say you've got, you know, I don't know, every, uh, let's do an array. Top. Let's do an array classic. I don't feel like doing the fancy new ones. There's classic array. All right, let's say we're going to do, I don't know, 15 rows, one column. And uh, row offset's going to be 20 feet spacing. All right, there's our... There's our pipe rack. But now you got to go and change every one of those. Easy thing to do. Look at it from the front. Now we're looking at a front view, the whole pipe rack in line with its with with all all the bents are in a row. And we can go in there and make our changes. We can just hit that global edit all, select this, and I've got 15 beams selected for my 15 uh, pipe rack bents. Hit okay, and he wants to go to A24 and we're done. I've just changed 15 beams and the whole pipe rack is now saved. So, 
Um, that's your global edit all. Um, if you are not a, um, if you are not an icon user, if you are a keyboard user, make um, command aliases for these commands. They're they're not easy. This one is SGC edit. This one is SGC edit all. That's kind of a pain to type out. Make aliases. Um, make al aliases for whatever you want. But these things both come in handy. They definitely have their uses when modifying multiple members at the same time. Uh, definitely get used to, to using those. Um, the last one on this line is kind of a silly one, and it may have its uses for some people. It's an annotate function. Um, if you select the line, sorry, if you select your member, you can choose long or short annotation, so we'll say long. And you can choose like justification center, um, and we can say, like put it here, rotation angle. And what it does is it literally just writes out the, the, the name of the beam in model space. Um, I believe it works in paper space as well, but you know, I, I just, I really, I really, it didn't have serve much of a function because you're, especially if you're going to be using single line, which I highly recommend and we'll get into later, you won't need to do that. So I wouldn't really bother with that. But yeah, these editing functions here, again, you're not going to need local component edit. That's just the same thing as double clicking as a reminder. So you won't need that. It's really this global edit and global edit all that you're going to want to make changes to. So there's that. Oh, one last thing. Let's go back to the original MPSs that we tagged. Okay. You'll notice that this one is MPS001, and this one is MPS003. When I copied this, it copied everything, including the tag. This is also MPS003. You have to remember that if you're going to copy something that's been tagged, and this is so easy to forget, and I forget constantly. It's, it's just, it's, it's an easy thing to forget. If you're going to copy something that's already been tagged, change that tag to four. Okay? In addition, in addition... <laughs> If you're going to make changes with global edit all, and I'm just going to change the 615 so you can see this. Notice how it says MPS 004. When I hit OK and go to my bigger column size, what happens is every one of these gets changed to 004. Try to save your tagging for near the end. Um, in fact, this is actually a good case. It's not as smart, like, and I say smart, I mean like, like, CAD work smart. But it's it maybe saves you the headache. It wouldn't be bad at it, a bad idea to get in the habit of of just putting text at the base of your uh, of your support that can be seen in the model and in Navis. Um, that way, you can arrange steel. It's nice to be able to mouse over it and see it there, but at the same time, if you want to copying members around, they're forever going to have that tag. If I go use this in something else, it's going to say MPS004, and when I make mul changes to all of them at the same time, it's going to copy those changes. So definitely, it's one of the downsides uh, to using that function after you've tagged steel to go and do a global edit all or, and such. So maybe better to just put the text down and ignore using this function altogether the at the edit all um right the edit sgc edit altogether so but i want you to be aware that it is there